Last week we talked about how to buy a weaving loom and all the considerations you might run through in your head as part of making that decision. Now part of that conversation is about making the loom fit your needs. Even if on paper, if it's the fanciest, most awesome, most popular loom out there, you can still tweak it for you and your own needs. And so today I just want to show you what I did to my baby wolf loom to make it fit my needs. Thanks so much for being here. I am Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a vlog that I started a, a couple of years ago now to talk about how important it is to make time to make things. I talk a lot about yarn, knitting, weaving, spinning, and the fiber arts. If you are interested in any of these fiber arts, I welcome you to subscribe to our channel to see all of our tutorials and the videos that we make about knitting and spinning and weaving and all of these things. Now in today's video I'm talking about a little hack that I made to my beautiful cherry baby wolf loom from Schacht. This loom I bought back in about 2008 and I bought it on specs alone. I had never seen it in person, I'd only ever seen photos of it online and read reviews about it online. So I lusted after this loom because of what I had heard about it. I didn't know if it would fit my body size or anything and I'm very lucky that it did. Um, I'm just, I'm very lucky that this loom is gorgeous and amazing and I just love weaving on it. So now, why would I even consider modifying a loom, especially one that works for me? So part of the reason that I think about modifying your loom to fit your body or your lifestyle is that a loom, like we talked about last week, can be a big investment. And so you don't want to feel like you've invested all this space and all these resources into something that doesn't fit you exactly perfectly. It's especially tricky when you buy a loom sight unseen like I did. So I know from experience that I've tried to work on a loom where I discovered that my legs are actually too short and they didn't reach the treadles, like my feet wouldn't reach the treadles that well. And so there are things that you can do to make your loom fit you better. And so in the example of my feet not reaching the treadles, I've heard about people attaching blocks to the tops of the treadles, and then you step on the blocks and you can effectively sort of bridge the distance between your foot and the treadle, allowing you to use a big loom like that. But in the case of my baby wolf loom, it fits my body size perfectly. So what else is there to modify? So let me tell you about this little hack that uh, <laughs> that I've done. It's a hack that I heard about many, many years ago from Sign Mitchell. She's the host of an old uh, podcast called Weavezine. She has a blog as well, Weavezine. So basically the baby wolf comes with metal heddles, which look like this. And they're great, they're very efficient, but they can be a little bit noisy. So when you step on the treadles, the shafts change and they go clang and they rattle around a bit. And it's fine if you're just, it's just you in the house or if you're listening to podcasts or you listen to music with earphones and you can definitely get used to this sound. It's really not that bad. But I had in my mind this idea that I could make my loom more quiet and that it could become almost like this stealth or seamless part of my family life. Like I could be watching TV and weaving on it at the same time, or maybe um, other people could be reading or playing or watching TV and I could be weaving and I wouldn't disturb them. That was kind of my idea, that I could just fit my loom into the rest of my life. So I wanted to replace the metal heddles with Texolve heddles, which are made out of nylon. So Texolve heddles are very soft. You can see they're soft and floppy, they're light, and when you step on the treadles, they don't go clang or rattle. So there's definitely a reduction in the sound levels. So I have these Texolve heddles. These ones go on the spring loom. You can see the, the blue twist tie on here. These are longer. This is what comes standard on the spring loom. And I just learned to thread them really efficiently, and I just really enjoy working with them. So in order to switch all my heddles from metal to Texolve, I had to order the new Texolve heddles online. For the baby wolf, you want the brown ones. Basically, they come with a brown twist tie as opposed to the blue twist tie here. So the Texolve heddles that you want for the baby wolf are 9.5 inches long, and I got about 100 heddles per shaft. So in order to change the heddles, you remove the shafts from the loom by unscrewing the bolt that holds it in place. Then you lift out the shaft. Then you bend the two metal support bars that 
very, very gently to remove them from the frame. And then I slid the metal heddles off on, onto, um, onto a pipe cleaner actually, because that's what I have in the house. But you could use twist eyes or something else. You know, Schacht actually has these short metal bars that hold all the heddles, but uh, I have them somewhere in the attic. I just couldn't remember where I store them. So I am using pipe cleaners. <laughs> Then with the metal bars, I slide each one into the big loops of the Texol heddles. And it's a bit of a tight fit, but you can gently sort of bend the bars and then put them back into the frame. There's little slots where the metal support bars go. When you pop the frame back into the loom, you just make sure that the screw goes back up through the hole in the frame, and then you put the bolt back on. Now, once I made that change to the heddles, I was like, yay, I'm all done. <laughs> However, once I started to treadle on it, I could tell that there were going to be issues. And I had been warned about these issues by Schacht a couple of years ago when I asked if it was possible to switch the metal heddles for Texolve heddles. And they said, they don't really recommend it, <laughs> but people do it. Uh, but the people who do it do find that they have problems with the shafts not sinking back down. Basically, the weight of these metal heddles helps the shafts drop back into place after you take the foot off the treadle. So back in Sign Mitchell's article about switching heddles from metal heddles to Texolf heddles, she said that her metal heddles weighed over four pounds altogether. Um, I just weighed my entire set of heddles that came off the Baby Wolf, and these are about three and a half pounds. So with the lighter weight Texolf heddles, the shafts don't drop down as consistently. And if they don't drop down, then you have some significant issues with getting a shed on your loom. That is a problem. <laughs> so here's the fix. I went online and I found some thin bungee shock cord in bulk. And then I did a couple of tests to get the right length, but basically I tied an overhand knot in the bungee cord and then I tuck that through the hole that already exists on the back of the loom. And then with the other end, I tied another overhand knot and then slipped that into the slot on the back of the treadle. And there's like a little indentation on that slot where the knot just settles right into, so it's perfect. And I know that there's actually a company called Lunatic Fringe that sells sets of these shock cords specifically for this purpose. They're called jazz bands, and if you're in the US, they're pretty reasonable for just like $12 or $15 a set, but the cost to ship them to Canada was a little bit too much for me. My options were basically $36, $100, or $110 for shipping a set of $12 bands to Canada. So that's really the only reason why I had to DIY my own version. Otherwise, they are already available online. So the point of these bungee cords is to snap the shaft back into place after you take your foot off the treadle. So basically when you press the treadle down, the bungee cord is stretched and under tension. And then when you let go of the treadle, the bungee cord snaps back up into place and it pulls the shaft back down into place as well. So what if you don't wanna use bungee cord to snap the frames back into place? There's another option, which I haven't tried, but I've read, and that is to add weights to the bottom of each shaft to pull them back down. Because remember that between about three and a half and four pounds of heddles were removed. So you'd have to add that back to each shaft. So that's like half a pound to each shaft to get them to sink down again. So between ordering the Texolf heddles in two separate batches, because I thought I would do four shafts first and then leave the other four shafts, but that didn't work out. So I had to order two sets of Texolf heddles, replace them all on the, all of the frames, and then order the bungee cords after finding out that the shafts didn't work. And then finding the time to put the bungee cords on the loom, like I think this entire process took several months. It's, it's not an arduous process, it just took me longer than I had anticipated. So despite it taking longer than I imagined, would I do this again? And I'm a little bit like, hmm, eh. If it was just me and my loom, the metal heddles are great and they work beautifully. There's no real need to change anything. But since I wanted to make the loom as quiet as I could in order to fit my family and my lifestyle, I made the switch. And while it took a little bit more effort, I do like that the loom is a little bit more quiet. It's not completely silent, but it's quieter. And one thing I didn't anticipate though was the fact that it takes a little bit more effort 
to push down on the treadles because you're working against the tension of the bungee cord. It's a resistance band, right? So if strength and mobility are an issue for you, then maybe this isn't a good hack for you to try. But for me, I consider it a little bit like <laughs> leg exercise. So that is it for today. I just wanted to share my experience of switching from metal heddles to Texolve heddles on the Schacht Baby Wolf loom. Since I know that there are weavers out there that are curious about that idea, I get emails about this particular idea actually quite often. So I was curious myself and so I had to try it out and see how it all worked. So let me know if you have done this particular hack on your loom, uh, switching from metal heddles to Texolf heddles, and if you've ever run into problems, or if you've done any other kinds of modifications on your loom to make them fit for you or work better for you. If you found this video helpful, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here nearly every Friday to talk about yarn and fiber and color and craft. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.